Okay, folks, time for part six, and it's another mixed topical bag. Do you really believe Mary was impregnated without ever having sex? Oh, that was a hard one. If someone came up to you and said she was pregnant, but she was totally a virgin, would you believe her? Uh, excuse me, but Mary isn't just some kid who came up to me a second ago. The validity of the virginal conception of Jesus is tied in with much broader truth claims and proofs, particularly Jesus rising from the dead. So let's not be so simplistic about it. Why did God have to rape a teenage girl in order to become human? Excuse me again, but rape requires sex, and there wasn't any sex involved. Just an act of creative fiat which the New Testament authors semantically paralleled to the ex nihilo creation of Genesis. Beyond that, yeah, actually, by the ancient view of personhood, Jesus had to be born of a human woman to be considered human. If you can go back in time to when Jesus was being crucified, would you try to save him? Or would you stand back and do nothing since your entire faith depends on him being crucified? Yeah, okay. Dark Matter 2525 thought this dumb question was so brilliant and he made his own vid about it. But look, when Peter did try to stop all this, Jesus told him to back off. So do you think it would be any different for anyone else? No? Well, there's your answer. And it had nothing to do with my faith. Which, by the way, is dependent on Jesus rising from the dead, not him being killed. What would it take to change your not mind about God's existence? Uh, better evidence and arguments than you guys offer, that's for sure. And after last week with all those pagan copycat claims, I don't look for him to do it. Do you think it's a little strange when someone says they're going to believe in something no matter what, even when all the evidence seems to point in the other direction? Sure do, and I run into fundy atheists who do that every day. What is something your pastor has said in church that you totally disagree with? Well, heck, let's just give a recent example. I'm a preterist. My pastor isn't. So I recently disagreed with a whole truckload of stuff he said in a recent sermon series. And when that happened, did you confront your pastor about it? Didn't have to. He already knew where I stood. And actually, he invited me to be part of a panel discussion on the subject of end times theology in front of the whole church. I guess I could say I'm in better stead than a lot of people when it comes to this sort of thing. For one thing, my pastor is a bit of a scholar himself. For another, he knows what I do and what my reputation is. But for the record, yeah, I've had pastors before that were not all there in the mental horsepower department, and I've corrected them on stuff. Like one time when one of them confused the Arian heresy with the Nestorian heresy. That guy didn't care much for the correction, though. Why are there so many Christian denominations? Ah, uh, this canard. Well, we'll break for an answer on that one, shall we? This episode of Miss Dusters. How many pirates does it take to screw in a light bulb? Arr! Was the Hindenburg really destroyed by peanut butter? And are there really over 30,000 Christian denominations? Jelly Squirrel. Chelsea Chicken. They are the Miss Dusters. So what's the fable this time, Chelsea? It's simple to start, Shelly. We're checking out the claim that there are over 30,000 Christian denominations. But that's not all there is to it, right? Nope, it's not just the number. It's also what some fundy atheists do with it. So, once again, Shelly hits the books, and it doesn't take long to find out that at least one part of the fable is true. Or is it? It turns out the source for this fable is a well-known and reputable reference resource, the 2001 World Christian Encyclopedia. It really does say that there are 33,909 Christian denominations, but that's not all it says. So this is really interesting. If we're going to say one of those numbers, why not refer to those six major blocks and say that it means Christians are very unified? Or even those 300 major traditions? Quite true, Chelsea. 
You could pick any one of those levels to prove whatever point you want to about a Christian unity. Now, since the numbers by themselves don't tell us anything, I guess the next step is to find out whether those 33,999 denominations really are at odds with one another. And so the girls take the next step, finding out what exactly denominations do. And what better way to do that than to visit some of them? So you're head of your denomination, right? Yes, yes I am. So you think all the other 33,908 denominations are stupid, right? The girls try a few more times, but nearly everywhere they go, the answer is pretty much the same. Until... So you think all the other 33,908 denominations are stupid, right? Stupid? No, no. We do disagree with some things in some of the other denominations, but not all of them, and not all of the things they believe. So why do they start your denomination? We serve a specific group of Indonesian immigrants in our state. We understand their needs very well, and we speak the same language, so we work best autonomously. Yes, that's the key, Shelley. A denomination is defined foremost by autonomy, not by doctrines or beliefs. So I guess the bottom line is that 33,909 denominations doesn't mean 33,909 entirely different belief systems or theologies. Yeah, and besides that, there's also different levels of doctrines that vary in importance. You can't just look at raw numbers and draw a conclusion. The number of denominations turned out to be the only thing that was right about this fable. So what should we call this one? Dusted? Dusted. Okay, back to the questions. And are the people who are in, the, in those different denominations bad Christians? Are they wrong? Which denomination is right? Or which group of denominations is right? Gee, it's not all black and white, you know? Some are bad, some are good, some are wrong about some things, some are right about others. Let's not view this in strictly fundy terms, okay? Anyway, that's all for now. Next time will probably be the last segment. Until then, this is JP Holding. See ya!